the news, a bandit group attacks another village. Scores wounded, hundreds killed, and thousands flee. A gun is a weapon, but so is education. Choose which war to fight. To hold a book instead of a bullet. Use wealth to sponsor education and not terror. Every financer of terror is an enemy within. Every soul taken is one more blood on their hands. They turn our boys into terrorists and tell them emotions are for girls. We trigger insecurity and ignore its outer. With every inaction, we birth another terrorist. A lot who worship their artillery, cling in allegiance to their sick and twisted beliefs. The only condition where evil thrives is for the good people to do nothing. The victors and the vanquished remain the same to those who are victims. The only title to the dead is the enemy. People internally displaced, even at home. Children like me look fear in the eye every day. They wonder how their parents survive through a world ravaged by war, living in regions where insecurity comes with the rise of the sun, where peace and security now feels like seeing a blue star. All they have grown to know is man's inhumanity to man. Neglect, poverty, intolerance, and fear look them right in the eye. But it can all go away. Their stories can be beautiful like a high school romance. Our days can be sunny and our nights peaceful. All we have to do is act. Show care, kindness, and understanding. Treat people with fairness, justice, and equality. Build a world where all children will be safe. Nigeria has the largest number of out-of-school children in the world. According to UNICEF survey report, out-of-school children in Nigeria has increased by 2.7 million due to insecurity in the country. In order to curb this, Ufuk Dialogue in collaboration with Peace Work Club organized a conference on peace and security among various stakeholders and children as children are at the receiving end. The conference, which is aimed at bringing children from various spectra to air out their opinion on the current state of Nigeria. Khalifa Muhammad, the keynote speaker, said, in order to have peace, we must come together as everyone is important in the advocate for peace and also create a conducive environment where children can speak. And in order to have peace, obviously, we must come together. Everybody is important when it comes to the issue of peace building. And that is why we collectively need to listen to our children. Let us know what is up with them. Let us know what they are going through. It is not sufficient, it is not enough that we've given them money, we've given them shelter. But one of the greatest things we can do to our children is to listen to them. They should make their valid contributions. And while doing that, they should not be afraid. They should be able to express their concerns. They should be able to tell us our fears. There are situations where we have cases, and then we do realize that the kids or the children find it very difficult to express themselves. Sometimes they are frightened. So many things will be happening, and then the children are aware what voicing out is a problem. And that is why we'll continue to advocate. We need to create an environment where our children can come up and speak. What do you think is Nigeria's problem? People say many things. People say poverty. People say greed. People say unemployment. People say our bad educational system. But from what I've read, what I've learned, listening to adults who are here to guide us, I've understood and I believe that Nigeria's problem is a problem of identity. So many of our people are dying. And a lot of them are children. If they're not dead, they're kidnapped. If they're not kidnapped, they can't go to school. UNICEF says about one million Nigerian children refuse to go to school today. It just happens that I'm, I'm just, I'm not one of them now, but what if it were me or that child of yours at home, your five-year-old daughter, your three-year-old son, that has refused to go to school because they're so scared that kidnappers are going to come in. And before, it used to be news. It used to be newspaper news and television news, but now we are seeing it. NTFC Kaduna, has been closed down recently. Why? Because they're so scared that 
the bandits, whoever these people are, are going to come in. And we do all of these things like our first said here. He said, we try to subjugate people. The only way you will try to subjugate a person if you see the other person as an other, not part of you. So if we are all Nigerians, we are meant to see that collectiveness within each other. We are meant to see that unity, that brotherliness, that togetherness within each other. Chema Okwara, the head girl of Nigeria Tulip International College, calls on politicians to go back to their roots and give children privilege to express what they go through. Our politicians need to go back to the roots, go back to your constituency and ask them, what do you people need? What is your problem? We hear all this news, 2,287 people, 1,603 people, but all these people will just remain numbers if you don't connect with them. You have to understand there are people with lies, with loves, with pains and with sufferings. And that is the only way you will start acting for their betterment. So our government needs to go back to their constituencies. Have town hall meetings where you invite the children and not just the privileged children. The children whose voices are so easily buried beneath the din of human existence. Sheikh Imam Nuru Khalid of Apo Legislative Mocks call on the government to think of a way to win the battle of insecurity in the country. You are now giving, you, you are now surrendering to Boko Haram. We must think of a way to win in this battle. It is my battle, it is yours, it is ours, and we have no way to run away or surrender to it. We must win it, and to win it is to say no to radical thoughts. One of the problems that is uh, facing us today is if you remove all the fight of Boko Haram and bandits, kidnappers and whatever, now you have another battle, another set that is living within, that has radical thoughts, that don't, don't want to hear the name of peace. They don't carry guns, but they carry words. They preach uh, anti-peace messages in the mosques and the churches. What are we doing about that? Radical thoughts in our churches, radical thoughts in our mosques, in the mouths of our preachers, in the mouths of our imams, and in the mouth, uh, mouth of our pastors are destroying our society more than any gun. Insecurity as we have it today is a multifaceted, multidimensional, and multi-layered phenomenon. Secondary school students, don't be upset. Though. This grammar might be too heavy. But then what I'm trying to say in essence is this, that the issue of security or insecurity has different levels, is at different levels and affects us from different areas. The conventional wisdom with which to discuss security, often at times is to look at security as a protection of lives and property and so on and so forth, which is basically militarizing the phenomenon or concept of security. It is beyond that. We live in a time today where our life is shaped by the internet. Cyber security is a very, or insecurity is a very cardinal and vital aspect of human evolution, particularly in the 20th century. See what is happening with internet trolls. Look what is happening with deep fake and fake news. Look what is happening with all other type of crime that is being perpetrated on the internet. Beyond that, you also have the environmental insecurity as well. The farmer herder conflict recall is as a result of the climate change that we're faced with today. You also have the problem of social insecurity, which affects young people as well. Drug addiction and drug use and, use and misuse and abuse has reached an unprecedented level, the level the world has never seen before. And it is affecting our young people. The political economy of drug is that societies become ravaged when these drugs are allowed to flourish within societies. We are all living witnesses to the challenges that we are having in the country concerning insecurity all over. Wherever you go, your mind is never at rest. If you are traveling, you see a crowd, your mind is never at rest. You don't know what will happen next. Even when you are in your house, your mind is not at rest. You don't know what will happen next. Somebody knocks on your door. Problems all over. Exactly nine days ago, some bandits or gunmen broke into the staff quarters of the university and cutted away 
with some of our staff and their children. About seven people were taken on 2nd of uh, November precisely. And then we woke up with this very sad news. Now, it is no longer about people being unsafe when outside their homes. These are people that are sleeping, that were sleeping on their beds in their homes. And then suddenly, after midnight, they heard gunshots and their doors were broken and they were taken. Some of them wearing only boxers. So you can imagine the trauma. You can imagine how we feel each time we go to bed thinking that anything can happen. If it has gotten to the stage that you cannot even sleep in your homes, there is no, your, your safest place is your home. Now, if we, if safety has eroded our homes to the point that people can just break in and just pick people and take them away to demand ransom. People have different opinions, different ideological um, understanding about that. When you talk about programs like Big Brother and the rest of all that, yeah, a lot of us are not comfortable with it. Because in a normal, cultural community, some of these things that are being officially paraded in our social media, they will not be accepted. Is it the uh, fake news, pornography, and some of the inflammable messages that are being communicated through the social media by people of different religions and even sometimes politicians? Dr. Olariwaju Voice TV, Nigeria.